Hi everyone, today I'm here to do a Friday Reads, which is I think going to a little bit more turn out like a state of my re reading shelf and just how strange I felt like this reading month has been because I feel like I haven't been reading like I normally do. And I think part of that is because I now work in a library and I'm exposed to lots of books and um, sometimes lose self-control. So I thought I would just go through kind of what's on my docket for the rest of February because I'm not in the middle of too many things at this particular moment. I've kind of been finishing things or I'm close to finishing things, like most notably Red Comet, the Sylvia Plath biography. I only have about eight hours left right now, which I'm so excited. Like I feel like I've been listening to the book basically non-stop all month and I mean I kind of have because I've listened to almost 40 hours in the past two weeks and it's been a lot so um, I'm almost finished with that. I have a lot of other audiobooks that I'm really excited about that now seem uh, blissfully short in comparison like 10 hours that's tiny um, so I, I have a bunch of those things I mean I guess I can share them with you you know particularly things I got from Libro FM either this month or last month that I'm just really excited about and I I'm kind of sad that I didn't get to right away, but Sylvia Plath took precedence. What did I get? Oh, I got a lot of things. Um, so I have first the project by Courtney Summers. I enjoyed Sadie. I wasn't blown away by it. I think part of my issue was that so many people had hyped up how great it was able to capture the feeling of a podcast. And I thought the production values were so-so. I didn't find it to be that convincing of a podcast, but since then I have listened to worse books trying to sound like true crime podcasts. So I guess the bar maybe was lower than I thought it was or something, but I am really excited to see where this one goes. I know it involves sisters and cults, and I'm excited to see where it goes next, because I thought the story of Sadie was compelling. I was mostly let down because so many people said that it was like a really immersive thing that you felt like you were listening to an actual podcast and I was not convinced. Callie's got a scratch on her little scratcher. You done? Okay. Uh, I also have a book called Winter's Orbit, which I had not ever heard of before looking through the Libro FM advanced listener copies for February, but the blurb said that it was red, white, and moral blue meets ancillary justice. Uh, I didn't particularly care for Ancillary Justice that much when I read it like six years ago, but I loved Red, White, and Royal Blue, and from the description it sounds like uh, political intrigue and romantic courtship in space, and I'm here for it. I also have The Echo Wife by Sarah Gailey. Sarah Gailey is an author whose concept I love so much, but haven't really fallen in love with any of their long-form works. My favorite thing that I've read by Sarah Gailey was actually a short story called Stet, and so I'm really excited about this one. I don't remember the concept off the top of my head, but I was I was very intrigued by it. Another book that I got, um, obviously I'm not going to be listening to all these audiobooks in the next week or even like before February ends. I'm just kind of like doing, a, I guess, a mini ALC haul right here, but uh, I have Last Call, which is a true crime historical look at a serial killer who was targeting gay men in New York City in the 80s. I thought that sounded particularly intriguing because it emphasized that it was trying to bring justice and a voice to its victims rather than highlight the killer, so I'm into that. I also have No One Is Talking About This by Patricia Lockwood, which is her new novel, and I, I never read Priest Daddy. I didn't like the cover or the title very much, although I've heard it's fabulous, so maybe I will change my mind. And then I have Honey Girl by Morgan Rogers, which is a sapphic romance about a couple uh, of women who are strangers who get married in Vegas, and then I think that they try to actually make it work post you know, returning to real life, so I'm excited about that. I don't know which of those I'm gonna go through first. Probably one of the romances, either Winter's Orbit or Honey Girl, just because the Sylvia Plath biography has been a lot, and now it's gotten really heavy because we're getting into the, like, uh, the, the part where her marriage is falling apart and then, you know, her inevitable suicide, so I'm gonna need something light, I think, after this whole journey, so that's where I'm at with audiobooks. Um, it's been very rewarding, don't get me wrong. If I was not enjoying the audiobook, I would not have listened to 40 hours of it, but it has been kind of all-consuming. I've been struggling with short stories as of late. I haven't been keeping up with my reading a short story a day, partially because I tried two short story collections that I was fairly convinced I would really enjoy and then emphatically didn't enjoy them. They were The Girl in the Flammable Skirt by Amy Bender and St. Lucy's Home for Girls Raised by Wolves by Karen Russell. I didn't like The Girl in the Flammable Skirt mostly because it definitely felt like it was written in 1998. It had some dated language, some offensive language that 
wasn't considered as offensive back then. There was a story about a librarian who was just like fucking all of her patrons and I just maybe it was it was really creepy and gross now that I look at now that I work in a library I was not about it um, and I just wasn't getting much out of her stories. I was left kind of with a hollow empty feeling of like not really fully understanding what the point of the stories were or not feeling like I was getting what Amy Bender wanted me to get or something and then Karen Russell there were a couple of moments of ableism in a couple stories and the stories were back to back so I was worried that that would become a recurring trend in her stories and again this collection came out in 2005 people weren't as aware of these issues or how to write about these concepts sensitively but both of the stories really put me off which was sad because I enjoyed the first two in the collection quite a bit but then the next two I didn't like so I just gave up on that and I haven't read a short story since then. It probably hasn't actually been that long, maybe a week or less, but it feels like forever when I was really used to reading one a day. I want to get back on it, and in the collection I've chosen for this is No One Belongs Here More Than You by Miranda July, which is a book that I actually won in a Goodreads giveaway, I want to say like three years ago. So, sorry Goodreads, I'm actually going to try and read it this time. Um, and these stories are really short, so maybe I can even do a couple a day, but hopefully this will get me back into it, but I also feel very comfortable in DNF a short story collection. If I don't get on with the writing style immediately, why even bother? So this is what I'm, I'm definitely going to be starting with this today. I basically picked it because it was bright and yellow and happy and sunny and yellow is my favorite color and you know I've been trying to kind of embrace doing things that I really love and bring me joy. It's my birthday week so excited about this. I'm talking so fast that I'm running out of breath. Uh, another issue that I ran into is that I was denewing the nonfiction section. So we have a new section of nonfiction and I was going through and picking things out of that um, section that had been there longer than six months. That's the process in our library. We're really small so things can sit there for quite a while. And when I was doing that I got really excited about a lot of the things that were in that section. So I checked out four of them and I don't think I'm going to get through all of them in time. Luckily I have the power to renew my own books, which is a fun superpower to have, but um, I don't know. The one that I'm least convinced about is actually the one that I started first, but I just don't think I'm in the mood for whales. It's Fathoms, The World in the Whale by Rebecca Giggs, and I'm intrigued by this, but I think I lost some of my enthusiasm about it when the introduction was all about beached whales, and then the first chapter was all about whaling, and I'm sure that there are a lot of other cool and more nice whale facts in here but it was surprisingly heavy at the beginning um so and it also brought me back to when I worked at CNN if you don't know I worked at CNN as an intern in their video archive a couple summers ago and I so I watched a lot of archival video footage and some of it included beach whales um it's surprising how often my the things that I watched over the course of that summer come up with beached whales was one thing that I had to watch several videos about and it was so disgusting to watch that it actually made me feel physically ill which I don't feel like I'm that squeamish but watching a beached whale and like seeing its insides was upsetting so that brought back some weird flashbacks and then yeah I don't know I just am not in the mood for this I don't think so you know what I'm just I'm gonna take it back to the library I'm not giving up on it forever but I'm not as excited about it as when I first saw it. I wanted to read this based on all those recommendations and I'm not saying I don't want to anymore, just not for now. Back, I think essays might be more of my street, so I have A Mind Spread Right Out on the Ground by Alicia Elliott. This was not taped very well. Which is a collection of essays from a Canadian indigenous writer based on the Mohawk phrase for depression, which can roughly, roughly be translated to a mind spread out on the ground. Um, and I heard fabulous things about this from a bunch of people, including Jill from The Book Bully, so I do really want to get to this. And maybe something a little bit more piecemeal like this would work better for me than a book about whales. Another one that I'm really excited to get to and I'm not sure if I'll have the time because this book is in more demand and so I might not be able to renew it, but it's We Keep the Dead Close, A Murder at Harvard and a Half a Century of Silence by Becky Cooper. I think this is closer to the kind of true crime I can get behind because it, the premise and the way that it was put together almost reminds me of like Bad Blood by John Carreyrou, which is kind of like, you know, an individual uncovering this whole corruption and, and, and lies and stuff at Theranos, whereas this is about a woman who I believe attended Harvard and found out about this the murder of this woman and how it was kind of Harvard folk folklore, but there were a lot of still unsolved mysteries and misconceptions about this case. And I think it's about one person's obsession and diving into uncovering this and figuring out the facts. And, and so it's, it's 
not entirely divorced from the writer's experience and is focused more on the victim and the process of what happened and figuring it out rather than it being about like the grizzly murderer and, and focusing more on them. So I like the more well-rounded, holistic view of those things, I guess. But it is pretty big, which is why I wanted to go with the physical copy rather than the audio route, which is normally what I would do with something like this, but it's quite long, so I don't know if I'll be able to get through it. But we will give it a try. I also have a couple of graphic novels out from the library, Band Book Club, which I showed in my TBR. This is actually due this week, so I will probably read this today, it's just so I can get it back, because I had to borrow it through Interlibrary Loan. And Solutions and Other Problems by Ali Brosh, which I also found in that new nonfiction section. I think this will be fun to like kind of go through. Hyperbole and a Half wasn't my absolute favorite thing ever, but I do like Ali Brosh's sense of humor and and her style. I just there was a lot of stuff in there about, in Hyperbole and a Half about dogs and like have, having never owned a dog. I just didn't connect with a lot of those things. But I think this could be this could be the one, and I'm really excited for it. And graphic novels go so quickly that. I definitely think, feel confident that I can get through this one in the next couple of weeks. Okay, so those are my general reading plans. I still really do want to get to Midnight Robber by Nala Hopkinson. I'm not sure if I'll be able to get through this one as well. It is a little bit shorter, just over 300 pages, so I think I have a better chance of getting through this if I'm feeling like a novel. Um, and then I have a couple of other books that I wanted to read for Invisible Cities that I haven't gotten to yet, but at this point I think it'll, I feel like I'm just rambling and listing off things for my TBR all over again, which is not productive. So I I don't know how my reading is going to go. I haven't been feeling very much in the reading mood in the past few days, um, which is absolutely not true at all because I read just read Girl with Another and I read that in two days, so I don't know what I'm talking about. Maybe just today I'm not feeling particularly in the reading spirit, but hopefully I'll pick something up that lights a fire under my ass and then I can get through these things rather than just vaguely talking to you about them because did I say what any of these books are about? Kind of. And of course I'll always keep you updated when I get to my wrap up at the end of the month. So yeah, those are my general reading plans for the rest of February. Kind of scatterbrained but I guess that's where my head's at today. I'd love to hear your thoughts on these books or anything else I mentioned in this video and um, if you don't know I'm not using Goodreads anymore. This is just a little PSA. I do check it occasionally to like add people's friends or update my reading stats but I haven't been putting my reviews on there and I haven't been like diligent about star ratings so if you want to know more about my reading and follow me somewhere Storygraph is the place and that is now what is linked in the description rather than Goodreads just so you know. I have a Storygraph, I have Instagram of course so follow me on those places if you want to know more updates in between my videos but I have a couple other in the works that I'm excited to share, so I will see you in the next one, and thank you so much for watching.